This project is a collaboration between Sid Toys, Dennis Toys, The Vine Child, and my sewing machine. That's right, I'm finally attempting sewing and my first project will be to fix my first ever woody which I tried to mod but failed two years ago. In that video, I tried making a custom voice box, hand sewing the vest to the shirt, hoping that it will fix the shape, naively painting the jeans with oil pastels, hoping that it will look like real denim, and painting a 3D printed flexible head that ended up cracking. Today, we are going to fix all of that, starting with the jeans. Here's an original Cloud logo woody with real denim jeans that has a really nice texture to it and it is highly sought after at crazy high prices which got me thinking. I have a pair of jeans. I mean the texture looks exactly the same and I'm so fat I could make plenty of woody jeans with this. I don't know whether to see the size but it would probably say super fat ass. For the head, we are going to use the Sid Toys Woody Kit sent to me by Dennis Toys. I'm sure you have seen this Woody everywhere by now. And if you are wondering where to get this, you can look up Dennis Toys on Instagram. He is the official distributor for Sid Toys products and is really quick to respond. His prices will be slightly higher because of his services, but it's probably the only way you can get to purchase Sid Toys products. So it's up to you. This woody kit comes with the woody head obviously and open palm hands. Oh, there's more hidden below. A box of accessories, a red scarf, a really nice gold chrome badge, pearlized, but oh, oh, oh. pearlized buttons embedded within the bodice. Unlike the old one which I really dislike, the head is really really well painted. As you can see from the eyebrows, even the hairlines are crisp and sharp. It is made from a similar soft material from a factory in China and here is an exclusive look behind the scenes. The head does look a little bigger than Thinkways, but the overall quality is so much better. The paint job is superb, it has blushes, the whites of the eyes are not over the line, the blacks of the hairs are more obvious and best of all, it has a toy mode expression. With most of the heavy lifting done by Sid Toys, the only thing left is the outfit. Let's remove the boots by softening it with a heat gun, then prying the base off. You will be greeted by this felt material holding the jeans in place, which we will need later on. The belt buckle is secured on by this baby proof material so that they won't accidentally swallow it, but that also makes removing them impossible with the heat gun. So I came up with the brilliant idea of cutting it, but just one line so that it is still able to hook it back. Now. Remove the embarrassing buttons which has already gone green, wow, why am I not surprised? And cut off the threads of the vest and the ugly tag. Last but not least, I want to separate the jeans from the shirt to replace with our own denim jeans. So I'm just gonna cut the thread carefully and slowly remove it. This is where the sewing begins, not with the machine, but with the pattern. I will need to dismantle the entire thing to copy the dimensions and it starts with pushing the stuffing out like pushing meat out of a crab leg. I'm gonna keep them separate so that I know how much to stuff it back in afterwards. Then, something weird happened, cause when I turned the top of the jeans inside out, both of the legs went crisscrossed naturally. Which means that's how I have to sew the legs on, I guess? I did not expect that, but okay. So I separate them into pieces, label them so that I won't get confused, then cut more of the threads to reveal the original pattern. Which is quite fascinating, cause I thought this was made with two pieces, but apparently it's just one Pac-Man shaped fabric sewn together in the middle. The leg patterns are also really interesting, as you can see they left extra fabric at the area where the three stitches are so that uh, there's a nice puffiness to it, which I did not know until I cut them open. Also, I always thought the signature legs were way too fat, so I decided to trim them on the side. I ironed them flat, started to mark it out and cut them off. Now the nerve wracking part which is to cut up my actual pair of jeans. I have to make sure that we cut up enough fabric for all of the parts and that the direction of the denim is correct. Like it shouldn't be from the top right to the bottom left. More like top left to the bottom right. 
Another confusing part about sewing is that you need to do everything from the inside out. Like drawing the patterns from the insides so that you won't see the nasty markings. And to make sure that the second half is identical, you need to flip the same pattern over to mark it so that they match. Then you can start cutting the pieces up and prepare the other part. While I prepare the belt loops and the pockets, I would love to thank our lovely patrons and members who support the channel. And give a special special shout out to Moby for upgrading to the ZW's Mind Blowers tier. Thank you for making this possible. Similarly, we will be sewing it from the insides then flip it over afterwards. I'm still really bad at controlling the speed with the foot pedal and my machine isn't high tech enough to limit the speed settings so I'm using the handle on the side to sew them manually around the corners. And this is what we have. It looks really neat but clearly still a beginner. I forgot to backstitch and the ends are coming apart. So I'm just going back to secure it. As for the front of the jeans, I mark the patterns out with the marker and I'm going to sew them on slowly. Adjusting and rotating the fabric when approaching the curves. And then we can combine the middle like so and do the same for the back. The hardest part I would say is the belt loops because the denim is already so thick and we still have to fold them up and there's really not a lot of space to sew the threads. Good thing we have 5 loops to make so my first 3 were like my sacrificial loops and the last 2 I made sure they were good enough for the front of the jeans. Sew the pockets on and we are ready to do that crisscrossed leg thingy. But we have to invert the legs out first which was painstakingly tough. I assumed because it's denim and it's thick. I slowly pushed it out with a paintbrush and I was a little too forceful. As you can see the edges are fraying, it's alright. Nobody will see it because they will be hidden inside, so we'll be fine. I just estimated the angles of the legs and yo load, but the result, wow, it's coming together really nicely. I stuffed the stuffing bag in, slotted the belt back on, sewed the felt onto the ends for the boot, and it's time to hand sew the three stitches. I tried to mark them out evenly before sewing, and one at a time, the bottom half of Woody is done. Attaching the top to the bottom requires something called the ladder stitch, which I learned in both of my plushie making classes. Just like a ladder, you do a little stitch here, then back down. When you pull it, the two halves will come together, and it's relatively tight. As for the vest, I will be doing the same thing as our previous Woody video. Basically, I am cutting the vest into shape and gluing it onto the body. But before gluing, oh, uh, what's that? This is a Woody voice box from Divine Child, and it has the perfect fit for a screen accurate Woody doll. The best part is that it has a slow retracting pull string and Tom Hanks voice directly like ripped from the movies. There is a Toy Story 1 slash 2 sequence of 7 phrases and after that it will play the Toy Story 3 slash 4 sequence of 8 phrases. It is part of Divine's Wave 1 sales so make sure to contact him through Instagram to get one. To install the voice box, just pull the string all the way out and cut the ring. Slot the string through the hole, insert the voice box, wear the vest, slot the string through the vest hole and you can tie a knot. I like to put some glue to make it extra secure or you can tie two knots instead. I also did the same mod for the holster, drilled the boot, painted the gold into yellow, exact same thing as before. I wanted to do something different for the vest because the blacks are supposed to be indented so I thought we could use a black string and wrap it with a wider white tape but I got so many sizes and none of them are of the right size. So we have to return to our older method of white string wrapped with black tape instead. It still looks decent, so I'm okay with it. For the head, I did insert half of Tinkway's voice box in the front so that the head can be secured properly. We just need to remove the attachment from the original head, not included in the kit. It's actually glued on pretty tightly so I had to use brute force. But attaching it is actually quite easy after heating it up real soft. The buttons are attached with fabric glue, the palms with zip ties, the badge came with magnets, and you can slowly adjust them in place. Then for the head, 
we put on the scarf and slot the head into the body. And that's it. How to sew your own denim jeans for your screen accurate woody. Stop wasting your money buying Cloud Logo woodies. Just sew your own and you can use that money to buy a Sid Toys woody kit and a Divine Child voice box. This is a comparison with the Signature Collection Woody and his ugly printed on jeans and a comparison with my own custom Woody which I still prefer because he has the Toy Story 1 face. If you like what I do, make sure to support the channel and I will see you next time.